that. But um, I wanted to find out if uh, people have had a chance to install Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab on your local machines, your laptops, the machine that you normally use for school, I guess. Um, and if you manage to experiment with Google Colab, especially at the bare minimum, at the very least, um, you want to make sure that uh, you configure, or at least you want to familiarize yourself with Google Colab. There's no configuration there. All you have to do is you just go to colab.research.google.com and everything just works out outside the box. Although, um, because of the nature of the, the platform itself, um, it turns out that uh, you still have to install packages, right? And, and, and in fact, I, I think we'll showcase some of these things when we are going through, uh, when we're going through, uh, what do you call this? The, the library that we're going to be using. So what I mean is uh, we, um, I'm just going to have to get rid of some of these things here. In fact, just everything. So what I, what I mean is, uh, let's, let's say, Let's say you wanted to, I don't know if this works outside the box, but let's just check here. Uh, let's assume, uh, sorry about that, not call a caller, but call up the precision.google.com. Let's say you wanted to, um, to, for lack of a better example, you wanted to, uh, to use, a, I'm trying to think of a, a, a package here, an example of a package. Uh, I know Panda is already installed here, but anyway. So what I mean is, you 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 still need to install. Let's try and see here if we can. You know, my Plotlib here is already. I didn't have to install this, but what about Python pandas? Let's see if we can. We can. Uh, I'm sure this thing obviously works just fine as well. Just see if we can do an import here. Uh, just see here. So, so essentially, what I mean is that there are certain libraries that may not be available within Google Colab by default. Uh, so, think of these as uh, if, if you use a programming language like like Java, for instance. There are certain libraries that, that, that come together with the JDK. Same goes for Python. Now, if it turns out that you're using some obscure, uh, you know, library that uh, is not available within Google Colab, um, you can use uh, either one of these. You can use the cell magic, right? So because this thing accepts, uh, and by this thing, I mean Google Colab, it accepts uh, Unix commands, what, what you can do is you can run the pip command, for instance. And, and I think I'll talk more about this when we start discussing libraries. So you run the pip command, and the pip command is run in a fairly simple manner, right? So if, if, if I uh, wanted to, let's say, um, install, sorry about that, install Python pandas, what I would do is I would, uh, this is supposed to be called, actually, not, I don't know what I did there. But if I wanted to install uh, code, no text. If I wanted to install Python pandas, what I would do is I would do pip install uh, pandas, right? Um, and then uh, this command is going to be run in the background. Of course, you, you get to see the output, right? So you notice here that um, nothing has happened really because they already have pandas installed here. You know, so uh, again, the takeaway point here is I was, I, was, I was trying to do a recap of what we did uh, last week, um, and, and I think one of the things that came out of the lecture was that everybody was supposed to set up, um, uh, install Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebooks, um, and also familiarize, you know, yourselves with um, with how to go about uh, using Google Colab. It's it's a simple application, really. It's just a point and click, really, and sometimes uh, shift enter so that you run. Uh, you run commands. I don't know if people have any specific questions related to some of the things that we did. Um, we, we did not comprehensively look at uh, how you go about, uh, you know, using Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, we, we just focused on the bare minimum to help you get started. You, you really should be able to, to, easily, um, to easily find your way uh, with, with, with the things that we looked at last week. I, I don't know if there are any thoughts about this.
Um, that's fine. Uh, something else, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, it will come up, um, this, this idea that uh, you can, because you have to think here, right? When you find, yeah. when you find yourself um, working in the cloud, um, the obvious question of uh, how do you gain access to, to uh, data comes up, right? Now, the funny thing about using this upload feature um, is that um, it's tied to your session, right? So if, if, I, uh, if, if I wanted to upload, let's say some CSV file or some JSON encoded file or something, and I wanted to use it within my Jupyter lab here, and I, I use this upload feature. Um, just going to showcase what I mean just now. Um, so let me just go to, I hope I have a text file that I can use as an example here. I don't know if I do, but be done if I don't. Um, okay, that's fine. We can use this notes or something, right? So observe, what I mean here is that um, if, if I wanted to upload, if I wanted to upload that text file and sort of like integrate it within my notebook, right? Let's say I'm reading data from, from the text file and then doing some, some processing or something. It turns out that, uh, and, and, and this is beautiful because you, you notice there's, there's even this, uh, um, this warning message, if you will, right? This pop-up box that says, uh, uploaded files will get deleted when this runtime is recycled, right? So, the, the data itself does not persist, um, which is why it's a good idea for you to take advantage of uh, your your Google um, Google is it Google Google Drive or um, if you use a Google sh a shared drive or something, right? Um, so you mount it, right? So you have to explicitly mount the drive and then you refer to it in here. And I think I showcased this, right? So once you mount this thing. Um, you would have something similar to what you're seeing here. And I'll get uh, a notification here requesting me to authorize, uh, uh, to authorize Google Colab to connect to my drive. And then I'll go through this, this, this too familiar process, right? Where I just allow Google Colab. And then I'll, I'll then have access to my drive. Um, so the difference here in having access to your drive or referring to files in your drive and, and, and uploading them directly is that the information in your in your drive or your shared Google drives uh, will persist, right? They are always there, unless if you explicitly delete them or something. Whereas the information that you upload via Google Colab um, is is only tied to your session, so you will not find the information the next time you try and log in or something. Um, I thought I'd mention that, anyways. Uh, and by the way, I've I've just lost uh, power here. I hope um, power will be restored before I run out of battery power. But anyways, um, so, so that's that. Uh, I don't know if any questions or thoughts about this. If not, then maybe we can, uh, um, we can just quickly get through uh, part three, which is uh, getting started with Python. 